Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to paint these really mesmerizing wet on wet watercolor washes. They're super easy and super helpful to know how to do, so let's get started. My favorite brushes to use for this are a chunky quill or mop brush, but also have a nice round on hand that's stiffer with a little bit of spring. I'll be using Daniel Smith watercolor paints for this. They're one of my favorite brands to work with. The colors are Quinacridone Rose, Thalo Blue, and Hansa Yellow Deep. Also helpful to have is some sort of spray bottle. This is a mister and I find the water comes out a lot more consistent and controlled than some of the cheaper spray bottles. To start, I'm using paint straight out of the tube so I can get a really high level of saturation. And also, if I need more paint once I've started working wet and wet, I can quickly mix some as opposed to dry pans. You'll need to mix a lot of paint, especially if you're working with a larger area, you'll need way more than you think. The mop brush is going to drink up all of the paint and you want to have enough once you've laid down the main areas for splatter effects and to touch up any areas that might need more color. Once you've mixed enough, test your color on some scratch paper and make sure it's super pigmented. You don't want any areas that look watery and you want to see strong color in the whole brush stroke. Before I paint, I'm going to spray my paper with the mister. I'm about 6 to 12 inches away and I'm spraying sporadically on the page. I'm not trying to coat the entire paper. This will help for two reasons. First, it'll make random puddles our paint will explode into, creating really exciting effects. But it'll also keep our paper hydrated so we can work wet on wet longer. Now I'm going to pick up a lot of the paint with a quill brush. Make sure your brush isn't really full of water from cleaning it. You want to go in with a somewhat damp brush or it'll dilute your nice paint you just mixed. As I lay down paint, I'm kind of just making making rough abstract shapes with it, putting paint in the direction I'd like it to go. All that water on the page will really help spread it. Then I drop in my second color, making sure to start painting on an edge of the first color where there's a bead of paint or at the very least it's still wet so it can mix immediately and create a really smooth blend. I'll do the same with the third color. Keep in mind when you're using a lighter color like this yellow orange, make sure your brush is super clean before you pick it up. You want to keep the paint really vibrant, so avoid mixing in previous colors. The pink wouldn't be as big of a deal, it would just make a coral color, but typically you'd want to stay away from complementary colors like blue and orange, purple and yellow, or red and green. I'll do one more spray with my mister just to evenly re-wet my wash. This will also help the paint to keep mixing more and more. I'll get a clean damp brush and fade out some edges here and there to get a nice watercolor look and allow the paint to flow into different areas. You can also help along a drip effect by pulling a strip of water down and letting the paint pool there. This is why it's important for your paper to stay wet while you work so the paint can be moved around. Next, I'm going to pick up my stiffer, springier round brush for flicking. And also make sure your paint is still wet to get a nice effect. If your paint is already dry, you'll get really harsh splatter. Like I mentioned earlier, be aware of what colors you flick into. I'm flicking the quinacridone because I know it'll look nice with the thalo and at worst turn into purple. I can also put in the orange because it'll turn into coral. Think about contrasting colors, darker paints into lighter areas, lighter paints into darker areas. Experiment with angles and directions here. Very important as well, make absolutely sure your paint is still highly saturated and not watery when you flick or you'll create background effects and dilute your really nice gradients. Finally, we'll add a couple of drops of water for cauliflower effects, but where we want them. I usually put them at the edge to encourage a look of fading into or from the background, but also as a pro tip, you can put them in any areas you mess up or don't like. This is all about experimenting and making accidents on purpose, so just have fun and let go of what's right. You really just want a wet, sloshy mix you can manipulate and play with and do all the great things watercolor can do. Thanks so much for stopping by. Please like and subscribe if you want to be alerted of new tutorials, and as always, take care everyone.